हेलो वेरी वार्म वेलकम इन फिलोसॉफी पार्टनर यूट्यूब चैनल टू नाइट आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस फिलोसॉफी ऑफ हिंदू जू पॉइंट वाइज पॉइंट वी विल डिस्कस इन फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव्स इंट्रोडक्शन सोर्स ऑफ हिंदू फिलोसफी वैदिक हिंदू मेटाफिजिक्स हिंदू रिलीजियस कॉन्सेप्ट एंड प्रैक्टिस वैदिक हिंदू इथिक्स ऑब्जेक्टिव्स एन एंशियंट सेइंग डिपिक्ट्स अ पर्सन अन अवेयर ऑफ द गोल्डन ट्रीजर लेइंग अंडरग्राउंड वॉकिंग अप एंड डाउन द फ्लोर सेवरल टाइम्स एंड ब्रूडिंग ओवर हिज रैचड स्टेट ऑफ लिविंग बीइंग इंडियंस मच मोर एज स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ फिलोसॉफी we are to be aware of this treasure of our land the present unit on the philosophy of hinduism initiates the students to the precious nature of this treasure and motivates them to unearth the hidden riches of the religion spiritual and philosophical heritage of hinduism our next point is introduction india is the birth place of many religions and religious sects you also know the world the word hindu is not of hindu origin it is not found in any standard sanskrit dictionary the persians used to refer to the people who lived on the other side of the hindus sindhu river as hindu hinduism is more of an umbrella sheltering many different religious tradition which originated in very ancient times and in various parts of the subcontinent some hindu thinkers suggest that the vedas provide the bond that holds the hindus together next point is sources of hindu philosophy scriptures are the codified expressions of religious mystical experiences of great souls scriptures make the unknown known the hindu scriptures are divided into two distinct categories shruti and asmriti reveal text shruti what is heard and remember text smriti what is remembered the four vedas and 108 upanishad come under the shruti category the bhagavad gita 18 puran manu smriti dharma shastra arth shastra kam sutra tantra and many others come under the smriti category the distinction between shruti and asmriti is important for the two following reasons number 1 in case of conflicting views shruti views will hold good without requiring any change in the shruti the smriti preserve the authority admitting changes in it next point vedic hindu metaphysics Vedic Hindu concept of God. What is Vedic Hindu concept of God? We briefly define. We will define briefly define on this point. The Vedas are pantheistic. The names Ishvara and Isha are not found in the Rig Veda. Although the verb form is frequently used to express the power of the gods though the noun form ishvara is found in the atharva veda it certainly does not have the connotation of later times certain upanishad begin to put the concept of the lord in the foreground and the shweta shwetar upanishad gives it still greater prominence the personal lord is finally and fully disclosed in the gita in the vedas 
द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द लॉर्ड इज नॉट फुल्ली एक्सप्रेस इन जेनरिक टर्म्स सच एज पाति प्रभु अधिपति इटीसी द टर्म लॉर्ड डज नॉट रेफर टू वन पार्टिकुलर गॉड बट इच टाइम रेफर टू द डिफरेंट वैदिक गॉड्स इंद्रा वरुणा अग्नि सोम इटीसी कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ आत्मन ब्राह्मण बिहाइंड ऑल द टेम्पोरल फ्लक्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द सेंसेस इज अफ्टर पर वैसिव टाइमलेस एंड अनचेंजिंग रियलिटी इट इज आइडेंटिकल टू द एसेंस ऑफ द ह्यूमन बींग एज वेल द अर्ली वैदिक उपनिषद कॉल दिस यूनिफाइड एंड इम्पेरिसेबल वर्ल्ड सोल एज ब्राह्मण और आत्मन द फॉर्मर हैज गॉड हेड एंड द लेटर एज द सेल्फ रिसाइडिंग एट द डीपेस्ट लेवल ऑफ वंस पर्सन द थियस्टिक उपनिषद टीच दैट दिस ब्राह्मण इज अ सिंगल डीटी ईश्वरा और ईस लॉर्ड दिस कुड बी आइडेंटिफाइड विथ दैट ऑफ शिवा और विष्णु ऑफ सेक्रेटेरियन कम्युनिटीज द अल्टीमेट रियलिटी इज अनमेनिफेस्टेड येट वाइटल ब्राह्मण इज डिस्क्राइब्ड एज लाइफ गिविंग ब्रेथ प्योर कंसनेस ब्लिस एंड इटरनल इट इज द इन्फिनिट सब्जेक्ट बाय होम ऑल ऑब्जेक्ट आर नॉन द इनर गाइड of all that is there are difficulties in comprehending this hidden reality that either transcends or simply cannot be known through the structures of time space and causation the upanishad hold that through discipline practices of meditation and the cultivation of extraordinary knowledge it can in fact be discerned such discernment releases one from the apparent cycles of life and death caused by one's ignorance of the fact that the essential self does not die in vedic hindu metaphysics we will define on nirguna and saguna brahman what is nirguna and what is sagun brahman the ultimate reality is acknowledged in the upanishad as both immanent and transcendent in nature brahman is both cosmic saguna with characteristics and a cosmic nirguna without characteristics brahman is both cosmic cosmic sagun with characteristics and a cosmic nirguna without characteristics sagun brahman is understood to be the finest essence of all things in the world brahman is the substance of the universe this does not mean that brahman is the material stuff of the world which can be perceived sensually rather it is that hidden and subtle reality which allows all things to exist in the first place nirguna brahman cannot be described through definitive or positive statements since brahman transcends the limitations of language it is not subject to categorization and therefore can neither be perceived nor conceived thus one seeking knowledge of sagun brahman was to comprehend the unity of all things in the world constructed on the essence of brahman and the one seeking for an understanding of nirgun brahman was to deconstruct the phenomenal world as it were in order to comprehend the imperishable self that lies behind the world of life and death the process of knowing this aspect of brahman is negative theology via negative 
neti neti not this not this brahman can be best described only as this is not brahman that is not brahman a positive description of brahman would not fully comprehend the ultimate reality mahavakya great pronouncements the essential oneness of the individual self and the absolute self is called jeev iswara aikyam the scriptures say that jeeva the consciousness in the micro microcosm and iswara the consciousness in the macrocosm microcosm and macrocosm are one and the same the differences we perceive belong to the reflecting medium this is no difference in the essential consciousness at all in the scriptures there are many statements which reveal this oneness and these statements are called mahavakya mahavakya is a vedic statement which reveals the essential oneness of jiva and iswara there are many mahavakya occurring in the vedas but generally one mahakavya mahavakya is chosen from each veda as a sample first prajnam brahma aitarya upanishad second aham brahmasmi bradaranya upanishad third tat tvam asi chandog upanishad fourth ayam atma brahma manduk upanishad next point hindu religious concepts and practices in this point we will define in briefly transmigration of soul sin and forgiveness it's inside two points the doctrine of karma transmigration of soul are closely bound together the soul is not born with a body nor does it perish there with it is unformed constant eternal and primeval what happens at death is only the decay of the body the soul migrates from life to life being conditioned by the cause of ignorance verily one becomes good by good works and evil by evil works at death the soul suffers of its present body and enters a new one like a caterpillar which having come and reached the end of a blade of grass straws itself together and takes a leap to another blade the process is comparable to gold smith who makes new and more beautiful forms like that of brahman the kind of form the soul takes depends on its previous karma in which karma previous karma as is is resolve such is the action he performs what action he performs that he procures for himself bradaranyak upanishad transmigration of soul into a sub human species is also held possible when one dies he may even go to another region before he takes another birth in this world after the death of the body the life of the individual is continued in another body and so on in indefinite series according to this theory according to this theory the soul thou pure and blessed in itself gets entangled in the sansara cycle of birth and rebirth sansara meaning cycle of birth and rebirth it is because of the karma that it passes through 
इनम्यूमरेबल बर्थ ट्रांस माइग्रेशन बिफोर इट रिगेंस इट्स ओरिजिनल स्टेट द पर्पस एंड मैकेनिज्म ऑफ रिबर्थ इज इलाबोरेटेड इन द छांदोग्य उपनिषद According to the Chandogya Upanishad, a man after his death reaches the moon with the merit he has acquired during his life. He remains there as long as there is a residue of his good works. Then he returns again to space, and from space he goes to mist and cloud. It is said, after having become cloud, he rains down. the he is he is born as rice trees beans it is if someone eats him as food he develops further and finally those who are of pleasant conduct enter either the womb of a brahmin or a kshatriya or a vaisya and those who are stinking conduct enter either the womb of a dog or of a swine or of an outcast chandal sin and forgiveness what is the hindi meaning of sin and forgiveness and its brief introduction the seers of the vedic period possessed a peculiar awareness of sin and guilt there are three basic insights like three seeds which later may be developed into complete theories firstly there is a series of words indicating an external cause for all sorts of violence harming hurting and afflicting here the cause of evil comes from the outside it encroaches upon us and hinders the happy and smooth development of our being the evil is transcendent secondly another set of words seem to denote an internal source these words speak of an anxiety narrowness an anxiety narrowness lack of expansion and a feeling of imprisonment with in oneself here the cause is within and seems to be inherent in our own nature we cannot blame others but only ourselves we would like to be different and yet we are not evil here is immanent thirdly a set of words most of them compounds seems to suggest that evil springs from mal ad adjustment and mal functioning of a system that otherwise is far from being bad these words postulate a kind of factual ambivalence in almost any human value which can turn out to be either negative and mischievous or positive and beneficial evil here depends on the direction that events and values take and on the use we are others make of the data the vedas employ a term of grace for grace which implies pure and simple forgiveness looks this point the gods are requested to forgive men's real sins and also its constitutional shortcoming man is never worthy of grace from the divine mritika ta occurring only nine times in the rigveda denotes the grace that elevates man and wipes away all his stands we have here a forgiveness that comes unpredictably and undeservedly from the divine our next 
वैदिक हिंदू इथिक्स स्टेजेज ऑफ लाइफ आश्रम धर्म इट्स आफ्टर ब्राह्मचर्य आश्रम धर्म स्टैंड फॉर इंडिविजुअल डेवलपमेंट इन सोसाइटी एंड इकोनॉमिक एस्पेक्ट ऑफ सोसाइटी द टर्म आश्रम मीन्स अल अराउंड और इंटेंसिव एंड श्रम मीन्स टू एग्जैक्ट वन सर इट स्टैंड फॉर लेबर आश्रम दस मीन्स एन ऑल राउंड ट्रेनिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द इंडिविजुअल इट ऑल्सो मीन्स अ स्टेज a way in the journey of life according to vedic thought life is divided into four stages or ashrams the four stages are brahmacharya studenthood grahastha householder one prastha stage of detachment and sanyasa stage of renunciation before we moving ahead we looks again this line the four stages are brahmacharya the student hood grahastha householder one prastha stage of detachment and sanyasa stage of renunciation brahmacharya is a life of willing abstention based on self control and austerity or tapas brahmachari means student brahmachari means student the first stage of student begins with the upanayan ceremony and then the boy is entrusted to the care of his teacher with whom he lives and his student life continues with the teacher the first stage of a student begins with the upanayan ceremony and then the boy is entrusted to the care of his teacher with whom he lives and his student life continues with his the teacher the life of the student after wards becomes simple and hardy the simple and hardy life is intended to make him a strong and healthy and independent of all soft and luxurious living his life is based on self control self restraint and austerity during this stage the individual develops a deep insight into the realities of life his award is with that of the teacher in ashrams or gurukula gurukula a uh, gurukul is an institution of education his award is with that of the teacher in ashrams or gurukulas a uh, gurukula is an institution of education it has two distinct purposes first to transmit the heritage to the next generation and to to train the individual to lead a life of discipline great stress is laid on chastity and purity during youth in order to have vigor strength of manhood freedom from disease healthy children and a long life thus the very name of the student the brahmachari becomes synonymous with one who is under a bow of celibacy thus the very name of the student the brahmachari becomes synonymous with one who is under a bow of celibacy after completing the days in study and strict chastity during the student period the student has to present his teacher with a gift according to his ability then he returns home to enter the household life it's after grihastha grihastha is the second stage of life the married life of a householder where a person strives towards the first three purushartha 
धर्म अर्थ एंड काम इन दिस स्टेज ही हैज टू टेक अ वाइफ एंड कैरी आउट द रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑफ अ मैन आफ्टर मैरिज ग्रेट टेम्परामेंट्स इन सेक्सुअल रिलेशन इज इन ज्वाइंट मैरिटल रिलेशन इज ओनली परमिशेबल ऑन एनी वन ऑफ टेन नाइट इन अ मंथ वीमेन वेयर टू बी ऑनर्ड एंड लव बाय देयर फादर्स ब्रदर्स हसबेंड एंड ब्रदर्स इन लॉ वेन द हसबेंड एंड वाइफ आर कंटेंट टू विथ इच अदर देयर हैप्पीनेस इज सर्टेन एज ऑल क्रिएटर्स लाइफ लिव सपोर्टेड बाय एयर सो टू द अदर स्टेजेज ऑफ लाइफ एज इट सपोर्टेड बाय द हाउस होल्डर एज ऑल क्रिएटर्स लाइफ लिव सपोर्टेड बाय एयर सो टू द अदर स्टेजेज ऑफ लाइफ एज इट सपोर्टेड बाय द हाउस होल्डर हेंस द हाउस होल्डर इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द ऑर्डर्स द जनरल वर्च्यू ऑफ अ हाउस होल्डर आर हॉस्पिटैलिटी इंडस्ट्री ट्रूथ honesty liberality charity and purity of food and life he may enjoy wealth and luxury provided he gives arms any householder must duty must duly offer five great sacrifices daily great sacrifices daily one prast the householder at this stage of life quits the household life by way of overcoming the bodily needs and emotional attachment to the members of his family it is a stage of detaching oneself from the responsibilities of family life and handing them over to the next generation it is a voluntary withdrawal or voluntary retirement the generation gap between father and son is solved by this stage this stage solves the problems of unemployment and also the problems of social disorganization a man who has entered this stage instead of living for his family should live for the betterment of society and must undertake the work of educating the people of the neighborhood the rule of his life is to do sacrifice study and practice austerity and so kindness to all here he engages in veda study and remains always a giver and not a receiver and he becomes compassionate to all beings the simple ascetic life leads a forest dweller to the last stage sanyasa sanyasa or complete renunciation the achievement of the fourth purushartha that is moksha is attained at this stage it is characterized by renunciation and service every narrow relationship is renounced the person has no varna and he changes his name and residence he is called vairagi a man with no color and no denomination a sanyasin serves humanity as a whole the sanyasi is the one who renounces everything he gives away all his property and he no longer offer sacrifices he lives alone with a tree for shelter and he spends his life in deep contemplation and meditation the life of the sanyasi who freed himself from all human ties and stripped himself of all that ministers to physical comfort and well-being has always seemed to be the highest a true sanyasi should not wish for life or death he must rejoice in the supreme self 
sitting indifferent and refraining from sensual delights he must wander the earth aiming at liberation he must meditate constantly on transmigration and suffering and on the supreme self in order to trace the jivatma through its many births and to rest in brahman alone thus by doing this he reaches brahman in this modern days these four ashrams cannot be completely revived in their latter but they can be revived in the spirit to the great improvement of modern life today the brahmachari life of our period is past or is spent in school or college instead of the ashram of the guru the grihastha ideal is commenced at marriage it is very largely followed in its sense of duty and responsibility in its discharge of religious obligation in its balance ordering of life and in its recognition of all claims and debts today the third ashram cannot be lived in the forest by many and the fourth ashram is beyond the reach of most yet the idea of gradual withdrawal from worldly life the idea of meditation study and worship and the main duties of life can be carried out when finally a life which is well ordered from the beginning to the end is very much implied in the phrase the four ashrama